Welcome to this episode of The Compressor Guru. Today, the guru walks you through putting the loaded cylinders on the crankcase, and he shows you how to think ahead and make sure the parts are going together correctly before the assembly. Remember, we're working on an Ingersoll Rand 242, but something goes wrong. See how the guru solves the problems of matching parts to a machine older than the guru to modern day. And now, here's the compressor guru. Anyway, we're back from overnight. We got cleaned up. We're ready to go again. And we're going to, uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to put our low pressure uh, cylinder onto the power frame. Now, before I left last night, I painted a little bit of black around here and I painted the intercoolers black because they would actually be kind of tough to paint when on a machine and get them nice and uniform looking. Caution, if you paint your intercoolers, you don't want to just pour the paint on. You just want to get it to black so it dissipates the heat better. You don't want more paint on there that may hold the temperature. This is just a color change to dissipate heat. Okay, we got our new rod bearing. It's nice and clean. I have this clean. So we have our connecting rod bearing and I'll roll this down just so you can see a little better. It very simply slides on there. It's a nice neat fit. And that is ready. Now what we're going to do, I'm going to put a little oil on this because we're going to put our connecting rod over top of that here in a second. Um, let me take a little bit of cleaner and we will wipe our surface area very nice. Same with this. And the camera wife yesterday was going budging. You put a gasket on this? Now it's time. <laughs> camera wife. That's going to go right on here. And this is the side view of that on. Nice and shiny. I got a gasket that needs to be held in place. And since I only have a camera wife and not a helper, just a very, very small dab of regular old grease. Just going to put it right there. This will not harm the gasket. Not this gasket. This is a regular fiber gasket. I set it in place right there. And bingo, it stays right there. No problem. So our gasket's in place. Earlier we indexed the rod so that the rod is pointing the correct direction when we flip this over. And I got my bolts right there. And I got my bolts right there. go on there straight. There we go, we're started. <clears throat> oh. And my dab of grease didn't hold me good enough. With your Ingersoll kit, these little washers, you'll probably get new washers with this kit. That's something I mentioned earlier, that in the aftermarket kit, they don't always give you all these. The gasket's not up on it. Thank you, dear. There we go.
And remember we tore this apart with an impact. These never go together with an impact. Loading the high pressure side cylinder onto here. And the reason we're taking a step and stopping right now is I'm going to turn this over by hand because this wrist pin didn't fit as tight on the connecting rod didn't fit as tight on the wrist pin as I would like to have. It didn't fit as tight as the low pressure side. So I just want to make sure that when we turn the crank we don't have a click or a clunk and if we do we're calling a customer and telling him we're ordering a wrist pin and he's going to be a couple extra days despite the promise to be done tomorrow. So let's That's beautiful. We have no issues. Our cylinders are both on, our rods are both on, however our rods are not in the correct place. If you see this, the low pressure side hasn't worked all the way over yet. So I'm going to push in on it with my finger and wiggle it. And we're getting there. And as the, now the rod is below the rod bushing, and we can put our keeper on now. I'm going to wiggle it once again, just to make sure we have no clinks, no clunks. Friends, it is a good idea when loading your cylinders and, and putting your bearings in to constantly be checking and uh, that you don't bind up your crankshaft. If something's out of place, if something's crooked, your crankshaft will be difficult or impossible to turn. If you keep checking your crankshaft, it will turn as you go through this process. You won't have to uh, wonder what, where it went wrong. Simply remove your last step and try it again. We have our connecting rods on. I've worked them in. I've checked. We're not tight. Uh, despite the fact we have a little bit of wear on this uh, wrist pin on the high pressure side, uh, everything's tight. Uh, I was misled a little bit because this one is perfect and working the crankshaft I have no noise, no clicks, no clunks nothing. I'm confident in this machine now. This is our counterweight. We're put, putting this back on only as a bearing keeper and to help keep the machine balanced. We're going to eliminate the uh, centrifugal unloader. However, this still has to be installed correctly to hold the bearing and for balance. So, we have our 
two bolts that have the holes drilled in them. We go through our two holes and we're taking away Bell's smiley face. There is a right way and a wrong way to do this. Are we choosing the right way? We're doing the right way. Should have did it wrong first, but when I turn the crank over, you're going to see this stays perfectly centered. If I had this on the other way, it would be here, and when I turn the crank over, it would go out around this way and probably bang here and here till it knocked things apart. I will turn the crank just to show you that this eccentric, the way this is built, this eccentric matches the throw of the shaft. The sloth runs right around it. Okay, we're going to take and put a drop of Loctite on these two bolts. And this is just an extra precautionary measure uh, because we will have lacing wire through them, but we sure don't want them coming loose. And they may never come loose unless we put another wrench on this. So we're just doing it this way to be sure. Now, a few minutes ago I told you that every time you add something to the crankshaft, you check and make sure it didn't bind up. So we just put the lock on that keeps the rod bearing and the rods from, well the rod bearing won't move at all this way, mm -hmm. and the rods will only move a couple thousandths of an inch each. So now we will take and we'll turn the crank over and make sure we didn't bind anything up. And we did. So we're going to loosen those <clears throat> and we're going to push in on the connecting rods. As we turn it a little more. This will be out of Welcome back to the Compressor Guru. I have no idea how this is going to end up being edited, but we are now late delivering this compressor back. Because I was showing you that every time we put a piece on the crankshaft, you rotate it and make sure you don't end up with a uh, tight spot, we ended up with a tight spot. Because because this rod was 856 thousandths wide. The old rod that came out of it was 850 thousandths wide, and so they both were. 
So I ended up at the machine shop this morning and we took 15 thousandths off and it still wasn't quite enough and I had to put this down on a flat surface with a piece of sandpaper and take another thousandths or so off. But we are now ready to go back together. I have tested it, test fitted it and everything's fine now. But what we have to do is put the piston back on this. We're going to do that off camera because you already saw how to put the piston on. By the way, I had them uh, take just a half a thousandths out of here and that wrist pin fits super now. So we had a snag because of differences in manufacturing from 1958 to today. Those are now fixed. We are going to not film for a few minutes and get back to where we were when we were tightening up the end, when we were tightening up the governor weights in the crankcase. So I came back in here after being at the machine shop this morning and I thought, okay, we're going to check our fit and, <coughs> and uh, I grabbed the governor weights and the one bolt was stuck halfway in. Okay, and I went to push it out and there's no threads in that governor weight. The threads are in the end of the uh, crankshaft. The governor weight just laying here. I literally had to take the wrench and break the nut or the bolt loose and wind it out of the thread, the now new threads that were formed by the uh, Loctite in a straight hole. And uh, just to show, this is pretty good stuff. Now if that was threads inside of threads properly torqued and left to set, it would have, uh, well, let's, I'll just say I think I could get away without putting a wire in here. We won't try it, but I think I could. Beautiful. It works. It works. After all that consternation. Okay. We're going to artificially make a lock. I'm using a nice soft clean handle. Tighten our bolts. Okay. 
Let me handle a bit. You don't have the same weapon as two. Make sure I don't make the pieces inside. Pull that down. If it comes loose, it'll go nowhere. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's done. While we're right here, I'm going to take and put the end plate back on. Now, this surface is pretty nice shape. I cleaned it. It's smooth. I spoke to the customer this morning and he told me that when he first changed the oil before I ever looked at it, he said there was like a sulfur milky substance in the crankcase that he took out. Now I don't know what was in this, but it has been very hard on this surface here. You can see it's rough. I'm going to do something I don't really like to do. We're going to use quite a bit of RTV sealant on this to uh, You're going to use what? Silicone gasket maker. Oh. And I'm going to use quite a bit. I'm going to coat this pretty good and then we're going to put this on. I don't normally do that because if you've got a good gasket surface, your uh, gaskets should work. We do not have a good gasket surface here, so we're going to... But we do have a gasket. Oh, yeah. Okay, just checking. Yeah. Came in the kit. That's what I thought. It is. Okay, it's that way. And you notice the cutout down here at the lower left. Yeah, why is that there? Uh, that would cover newer models that have the low oil shutdown switch, and that's where it would be plumbed in at. Uh -huh. And there would be an opening in the casting there where the switch would fit through. Mm -hmm. So this goes up like that. I want to make sure I move it properly. So there we go. Get our bolt holes lined up. And I want to let that dry for a little while before I put oil in it. I will not forget to put oil in it, but I want to let that silicon have a chance to dry some. The other day when we were putting this together, I did not put the snap ring on. I actually hung the snap ring on the end of the crankshaft <laughs> so I wouldn't forget to install that. With how tight this fits, I don't think it would ever work loose, but now we know it won't. So we're going to move over to the press. I'm going to put the seal in the seal housing, then we'll put this on, and then we'll move on to the after core. Yeah. Here's the new seal supplied in the kit. I already knocked the old seal out. Nothing, nothing mind blowing about that. I 
set it on there as nice and flat as I can. I take my flat, clean piece of metal, I hold it flat. Wasn't that easy? So, putting some oil on the shaft. Friends, when uh, you saw me turning the crankshaft over, I was using my Nipex alligator pliers, but I was very careful to stay out around here. I did not want to clamp down on what, be a, what would be our seal surface and damage this. This is very nice and clean and smooth the whole way around. The gasket's made for a multi a multi fit. In the newer machines, you can see this hole and here in the newer machines that hole is in a 90 and this comes out here and this is solid in here so just because that extra holes there I'm not worried about it because it does ventilate the end of the crankshaft uh, into the intake through that port right there so this gasket would uh, fit a newer 242 as well as this antique through and my the gasket surfaces are all beautiful so we're not going to get excited about putting sealer on this because we've got good gasket surfaces Should be about 855 is what mine said. Well, these are these are knocked out. What do you mean? Well, they're not. I'm just getting it. That's basically my Z run. And oh, okay. Because I don't I don't trust these to be real true. Kind of rough. Yeah, rough mine, mine hasn't been. Mine hasn't been really uh, adjusted or well, anything for years, but. Well, as long as I'm using the same one to measure both things, I know what that's what I are. that's what I'm basically doing. I'm just okay. I'm not holding it very tight in there until right. I get it. spend any time on YouTube? Oh yeah. Well, check out the compressor guru. Yeah. Rod that came out, Whitey. What's that? The rod that came out was from 1958. Okay. And it was 850,0 are 855, 856. When I put the end cap on to tighten everything back up, you can't turn it. And so we just have to take and take 12, 13, I'm going to go for 13,000. Okay. Narrow it up. But compressor just like you have upstairs and for a rebuild. I promised out for 10 o'clock this morning. He's going to make it right. because nobody, nobody was going to do this yesterday for me. I didn't even ask that. I said, what are you doing in the morning? And he said, go see the boy. 
boy. <laughs> so, you're the boy. <laughs> Yeah, me and Barry just went out of the bathroom six years. And I actually think it might have been okay if it wasn't for, uh... had water in some time, and we ran it. And it, that didn't even stop it, but... Gave it a case of the knocks. Oh, it had issues. Old rod is brass. They're just great. aluminum so I don't really have to I don't have to kill it you know right I don't have to really I just wanted to show that indicator being at zero pretty close to zero anyway yep. about as close as that's gonna get yep that's probably closer than the rod was machined oh yeah If you were working on that hole, that would become an issue, but it's not. Right. I'm more or less just dead in it. So You said you need 13 off of it. Yep. I'm going to take five off to begin with. Okay. It's going to be on me. This isn't my shop. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure you'll get comments about that. Everybody thinks you have to have that turret. I get a lot of guys don't even know what that thing is. What's that? That toll holder setup. Oh. apart December 23rd in the evening got up December 24th and called the guy that does my uh, cylinder honing yeah he wasn't in you know what I had to do exactly. I had to dig my own homes up and do it myself yeah <laughs> imagine that the guy didn't work Christmas Eve we were here half a day were you yeah 
You don't own cylinders, do you? No. <laughs> yeah. Well, not here, I know. Oh, okay. Well, I, I have my own. I have my own homes, so I dug them out and put her in the vise and run the oil with one hand and run the drill with the other. And you know what it's like. Yeah. I have a hone here, but I would be. I would. For as much trouble as it is. For as much trouble as it is to do it, yeah, the guy charges me twenty or twenty-five bucks. Yeah. I charge forty-five bucks an hour. It took me more than a half hour to do it. I'm like, you know, eight, eight, We're at eight, right now, right there's where it was zero. And it's Right now. Doing it the old wore out way. Good. No pressure. Yeah. I don't think it's a very hard brand of one. No. Seem to be. One thing I'm a little concerned about is. Brass doesn't expand as much as aluminum under heat. Yeah. And with how tight the fit is on this, I'm a little concerned that when this gets to 140, 150 degrees operating temperature, yes. we might have a little golding. Yeah. And that's why I'm figuring it's 12, and if we go 13, that gives us an extra thousand. Some, and it's all it's all bathed in oil. Yeah. You have to run it an awful long time with that down in that oil to get it that hot, when you think? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not like it's got, not like a rod with combustion on it. No. But that compressor upstairs is an Ingersoll. Yeah. And it has a rod just like this in it, except it's probably brass. Yeah. And I can get you parts for it. Ten? Eleven. Take two more. Let me make hundred percent. This kid's good. What he's saying, I taught him everything he knows. But I didn't teach him everything I know. <laughs> I thought about it. <laughs> I thought about taking a rough piece of sandpaper and sand it because I got a real nice flat surface. Right. You know, that's where all machinery comes from is a flat surface. Right. And I thought about taking it and, and I thought that'll take me all day. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> By the way, you can keep the scrap aluminum you cut off. Oh, okay, yeah. A couple thousandths of scrap aluminum. There you go. As I mix it in with the steel, brass, and aluminum that's already made. Uh -huh. Where do you get rid of your cuttings at? Uh, GNC scrap knives. He just come and takes them and we, oh, okay, good. we don't really... Uh, we don't try to hold on to them until steel's up or anything like that. If it's yeah, your money's in this work, not trying to make a dollar no, out of steel. Yeah, that, that steel money is just whatever it is. I mean, if it if it's in this bed, it goes into that. If It, it could be steel, plastic, aluminum, brass, so it's not even clean, so it's not really good or anything. Cuttings don't sell for anything in here. Right. At one time, I understand they had a hard time getting rid of cuttings because of uh, the cutting oil that was in them and they were considered contaminated. Yeah, still is. They're not worth it. Oh. 
12. Where are we at? 12. 12. Can you get one? Because I don't want it to be in tight. Yeah. Now don't hit the wrong button and have to start over. Even if you go one and a half, I don't care. Yeah. Does the lateral movement of them matter much? You mean this way? Yeah, that way, yeah. Uh, there won't be but a thousands. Yeah. And I can, as far as getting it fit up, I the connecting rod has that much on each side yeah. between the piston on the piston pin to the where it hits. Yeah. So I can move it twelve thousands that way. That's not an issue. Yeah. Now do these rods press apart or do they go together like keyed or? No, that this this slips onto the machine shaft that is oil bathed. Yeah. And that's that goes on the crankshaft that end and. So you have the shaft, you have the bearing, which is just a piece of machine steel. Which is just a piece of machine steel. Yeah. And then, so you put these two rods on, they're already up in the head, or up in the cylinder. And then you have a flat plate that goes on to keep these from falling off the end of the rod and hold they keep these from falling off the end of the rod or off the end of the crank and whenever I turned that whenever I put that plate on tighten it up I'm like we're done I went and made sure it still turned because that's what you do yeah and just as that 12 thousands wouldn't let it turn at all that's 13 right on the money okay super introduce yourself Hi, I'm Alex Ryan. I work at Patterson Machine Shop in Phillipsburg, PA. And you are a journeyman, journeyman machinist? No, just self-taught. Self-taught? Yeah. By Whitey. Hi, Whitey. Hey, hi. And these guys aren't the boss. The boss isn't here. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for watching this episode of The Compressor Guru. Please hit like and subscribe and use the notify bell so you will know when the next new episode is released from The Compressor Guru. God bless you and have a great day.